As always, don't forget to check the video description down below for the best price on tools and parts I use in today's video. Today, got this E70, it's a 2010 BMW X5. It's a 3.0i without the turbo engine. I've done a lot of searching and I haven't found a lot of good videos showing you how to get the crankshaft at top dead center and how to use the timing tool. So today I'm gonna try and do that. I'm gonna show you exactly how you get your little tool in the hole. So anyways, let's check it out. Okay guys, and first of all, please forgive me. I got kids in the background screaming and stuff and you just have to deal with it. But the problem I'm doing today is you got these Vano skiers. You can see I've taken those off and the bolts will shear off and back out and that's not good. Okay, so I'll do another video talking about that. But what I really want to show you is how to get everything timed up because I couldn't really find a good video and I struggled with it and fought with it and finally figured it out. So first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to see these cam gears. Now these cam, well the, the cams, okay, the cams will spin, all right? And in my case, what happened is the intake cam, the bolts sheared off the Vanos, and this is what it looks like all together. This is the new one, okay? These bolt heads sheared off. So what would happen is the gear was still hooked up to the timing chain, but the Vanos assembly there was just spinning freely, um, freely from the gear. So these bolts hold this gear to this Vanos assembly. So... I'm hoping that we didn't bend or break valves or anything. And the other, the other one, the exhaust one that was sitting here was still hooked up and still in time. So what I did is you're gonna wanna spin these cams until you see, it's like a, they call it like a Q code or whatever. That means it's at top, okay? So once you're at top there, the crank is gonna be close to being at top. And as far as I know, there's no timing mark. And as far as I know, if your belt just or your chain just breaks i don't know really what to tell you comment down below if you have a solution to finding the timing if the chain breaks so what i did was i got mine close i put the q bars at top so we got the q bar the q bar and then i took my intake manifold off i took my starter out and i was hoping oh maybe there'll be a timing mark on the flywheel and there's no timing mark okay so here is my little tool that's inserted and most of the people I've seen talk about it, they're just like, oh yeah, just put your little tool in there. But I had such a hard time getting that tool stuck in there and into the hole. You can see, well you can't see now, but there's little holes. As you spin, you take, I took a 7 8 or, or 22, and you spin your crank, you'll see these little holes in the flywheel. And I was like, okay, that's the hole that I need to get into. But my tool, I'll show you, my tool came with two of these. Um, it would only go about this far in. And need to go like all the way deep you know so what i had to do was first you got to pull this plug out and where is my little plug okay guys and i can't find that little plug but what i'll do is right after this clip i'll throw in a clip where i stuck my phone down in there and you'll be able to see the plastic clip it's got a little hole in it and it's it's right down here you'll see it um and i stay take this pick put it through the hole and pull towards me and I really had to pull hard and wiggle it around to pop the plastic plug out then once you've done that you'll take your little tool right here the thing I have inserted is just another one of these and I'll leave a link below in the video description for the special timing tool you are going to need and you'll go ahead and like I said I was able to get it in about that much just barely be able to get it in and then what I did is I took my flathead screwdriver and like it was this tool was all the way back here so i was kind of prying and then i eventually just took i took this little half inch ratchet and began to tap dang it i began to tap on this side of my screwdriver and i also took extension like this and was banging on the end of this while i was prying in okay because this thing did not slide in easy for me so you can see I would get up in here and I'm kind of like prying on it and then tapping on this side of the extension to kind of help me push it in. Now, once you get it in, how the heck do you find the hole? <laughs> okay, so this is where it gets interesting. So again, if you break your chain and you don't know if you're on exhaust stroke or combustion stroke or compression stroke or whatever, you're going to kind of be in trouble because I really don't know what to tell you. Again, somebody, if you know the answer, comment down below. But I knew I was on combustion. So what you can do is I have this little magnet 
or I read on a form, you can take like a plastic straw and you stick it in here, okay? So you stick it in there, you put, you can see I have a half inch with the seven eighths and then you can go up, down. And what you'll do is as you do that, you got your spark plug out, you've got your little tool in here. What you'll see is your tool is going up and down and up and down. And right at the height of that, you're gonna be at top dead center, okay? And so what I would do is slowly come up and it would be coming up and then it would be coming right to the kind of height of that thing. And then I took, again, I was not able to just push that tool in the hole. What I did was I'd be standing right here with my right hand and I'd be prying really hard. And then with my left hand, I would be, you know, coming back up with it or whatever, watching my thing. And then eventually it just went slip and slipped right in the hole and now it's locked in. So now I know my crank is locked in to top dead center for my combustion stroke. Next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna line up our special tool here. So basically the way this guy works is we're gonna hook this guy up and you've got that hole right there and that hole right there. Sorry again for the kids, <laughs> they're yelling. And so we're gonna set it up. Okay, all stuff in the way, blah, blah, blah. It's gonna look like that. And then we've got our little pieces here. And what this is gonna do, is we're gonna stick it right you can see right down to here you're gonna stick it on there and then you can see it's not lined up so you see oh wait actually it is lined up so you're gonna line up with those two holes then you're gonna take the two little bolts boom, boom. they're gonna be right here and wait actually that doesn't look like the right ones well i know these are these are right over here so we'll just take these and oh this one is right okay all right anyways you're gonna go ahead and screw this in and then the other one is gonna have on my particular toolkit again below in the video description there'll be a link for a toolkit like this mine has a spacer on the other side so you're gonna take your spacer and your tool set it down on there you can see there's a little area for it to grab and if it's off any you're just gonna push this way or push that way and then you're gonna bolt it down. So you're gonna lock your cams in place and you're gonna lock your crank in place with that thing over there. And then what I am gonna do is because my problem was just, I needed the new Venus assembly. Again, video description down below, you can check these out. I am just replacing the Venus. So what you're gonna find is once you've taken these out, it's gonna be, it's gonna be really hard to stick it back in. So what you can do, and I haven't done this part yet, so you're gonna to have to get creative. My main point of this video is to show you how to do that because I didn't see a video showing you how to lock that in place. And after this, you should be able to figure that out. So next, you've got this, it's like a, what is it called? It's like a time belt tensioner. So you're gonna take a big old flathead screwdriver. All right, so I got my flathead screwdriver. And while you're putting these pulleys in, you're gonna take this, and come from this side. You're probably gonna need two people. I did this earlier. You can see here, I just want you to get the idea. You can see how I'm pushing that back, right? And then it comes back out. You're gonna need to take the pressure off that somehow. I don't know if this can be done without removing everything. I believe I'm gonna be able to get it. There's also another part to this tool. It's over, it's right here. And the way this works is in the midst of all of this, I don't know how this is going to work. I'm hoping I'm going to get it. But you're going to set this tool up. And then you're going to run your, your guy in here with your bolt over here. Right? This is the cam bolt. This is going to go through here. And this tool has pegs. Oh, I just lost my little bolt. It's okay. I'll find them. You got these little pegs right here. Okay? You're going to want to line these pegs up with this hole. Okay? So this is gonna look something like this on your car. Peg's gonna be lined up. Peg's gonna be lined up for your other side with your other little piece over there. And my new my new exhaust one is gonna be on the ground. On mine, there was um, imprinted on here, there was IN and EX. I know the original ones, they do it in German, but for mine it was intake, exhaust. This is gonna be your intake side. This is gonna be your exhaust side. So you're gonna kind of set these up. Then you're gonna set your tool up, tighten your tool down. It's gonna bolt here and bolt here. 
and then somehow you're going to take the tension off and kind of bolt those back in. And that's kind of where I'm at. Again, I don't know if there's more required takeoff. I think I'm going to be able to do it just like this. But you have to get everything timed up before you can go back in and tighten everything down. So hopefully now you have a good idea of how to use this tool. Again, that was the main part of the video. So if I'm wrong about the, the latter part, just leave me alone, guys. I'm just trying to show you how to use the tool. There's plenty of videos. I'll try and leave a couple uh, links below in the video description that they do like 30 minute videos um, going into this. And maybe you can watch those as well and really get some insight. But I didn't find this anywhere, the getting the thing in and all that. So anyways, thanks for watching. Hope that helps. I'll see you next time.